Hello and welcome, this is Noah with Nomad Gaming, and thank you for joining us for this video about the Marvel Champions LCG. Marvel Champions is a living card game produced and distributed by Fantasy Flight Games. If you are looking for a place to see more Marvel Champions strategy, deck building, and of course gameplay, hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications to keep up to date with our channel. Today's deck tech provides another look at our latest hero, Black Widow, this time paired with the aggression aspect for a bad guy stomping machine like no other. Let's jump in and take a look at how we have choreographed our own little dance of death. Starting off with our new hero, Black Widow, we get a reminder that in alter ego form we draw a card with the first preparation card we play each turn. In hero form we get to deal extra damage with each preparation activation, an ability that will be key to our aggressive strategy. As far as the aspect cards go, Dance of Death and Widow's Bite are key elements of the aggression strategy. Dance of Death provides three separate attacks on one card, which can trigger some key aspect cards which you will see in a few minutes. Attackrobatics is going to pull double duty on defense and damage, but remember, guard minions will prevent this from triggering at all, so carefully and aggressively manage the board state. The rest of the signature pool plays a huge role in helping to manage the encounter deck and allowing our hero to defend on her own. We will want to take advantage of the value in Winter Soldier, ideally using him to manage threat and, if necessary, soak up a surprise attack or two. Convert Covert Ops is a core threat management card, so we should use it wisely and often. For more detailed discussion of these signature cards and the Black Widow expansion, take a look at our hero review, which is linked on screen now. This build is again leaning heavily on the upgrade cards for success, this time packing 8 preparations and 5 more powerhouse aspect cards. As far as the preparations go, Counter Attack comes as a full playset. It is only a 1 per player, so you should use it aggressively. The damage adds up and there is always another one to play. Espionage is here for card draw, especially in expert and or heroic mode, and target acquired is growing on me. My original review was critical of this card, but in some of the later scenarios, this guy really puts in a lot of work. Just remember that this too is a one per player, so play it appropriately. Other upgrades in the deck have come have some great synergies with the signature pool, and Raged is going to let Winter Soldier attack for four, and as the game goes on, we go through our deck so quickly that when he dies, we can expect to get him again very fast. Uh, the big tech in this one is going to be Yarn Yarn Bjorn. This is going to let us pay physical resources anytime we attack and deal two damage. Remember how I said Dance of Death has three different attacks? Yeah, that's right. The right hand, with the right hand, we can turn Dance of Death into 12 damage. Many of the preparations are also attacks, so don't be afraid to use your hand to pile it on, especially when you need to nuke a guard minion or two. Finally, we have we run single copies of Downtime and Endurance. I'm considering switching this to two Downtime. The second one can become a perpetual resource, but I find that I'm playing Downtime far more often than I do Endurance. Uh, but I do like the idea of Endurance, so we're going to leave it in, and then we'll see what happens in the future. Not a ton of surprises here in the ally slot. Tigra can be a huge value, and she's a lot of fun to plop an Enraged on. Yes, that means that she won't be able to stay on the table forever, but... Uh, Effectively, she becomes like a four-cost attacker with one consequential damage because of the heal, so uh, that's a lot of fun to play with. Lockjaw is good. Anybody that wants to say otherwise needs to stop trying to argue against him. He's a recursive threat that can clean up an otherwise wasted turn by being played from the discard pile, and in this situation, we can pitch him to Yarnbjorn for two damage, so he's in. Mockingbird and Fury are staples, and yet again, they find their home here. I wouldn't put Enraged on Fury, but you're your own person. You can do what you'd like. In support, this slot seems to be changing in my mind between Helicarrier and Quinn Carrier. Uh, I don't end up playing this often in the early game, and so I'm leaning towards Helicarrier uh, because it can be played as a resource uh, for Yarnbjorn, uh, especially in the mid to late game when you're not really interested in dropping it on the table. However, if you do play it early in the game, Quinn Carrier I think is strictly better because it generates a physical resource or a wild resource that can actually be used as a physical resource to trigger Yarnbjorn as well as being used to play anything else that you want. Um, so it might be a better choice even though from hand it's going to be relatively useless because it doesn't have the physical resource uh, icon. 
We are only going to carry one event in addition to our signature ones. We're going to play two copies of Chase Them Down. It is situational, uh, so when you have an opportunity to use it, you need to do so without hesitation. Uh, you may not get another chance to play it. Uh, we have run. We have to run it though because we don't have a lot of good threat management with the deck. We're relying pretty heavily on covert ops. Uh, and maybe a little bit from Winter Soldier to do some thwarting, so the extra thwart uh, from this is really going to pay off. There's not a lot of surprises here. We've got two powers plus three basic double energies. They all have their value and they're going to keep their place. It is a little bit weird in this deck because most of the stuff that we play doesn't have uh, a cost that justifies this, especially the aggression cards. Uh, but the wild resource on power of aggression is what keeps it in the deck instead of switching it out for something else. It can be used as a physical resource as well as to uh, churn out some of the other stuff that we've got in the deck. Uh, just very rarely, I mean, I think Tiger might be the only thing that we play uh, that is actually a two-cost aggression card. So here's the full list. Link will be in the description below. As far as strategy for this deck, uh, it's a little bit more nuanced than just smash it. Uh, the opening hand benefits a ton from having gauntlets and or synth suit. Uh, a lot of games I don't get to play a preparation on turn one because we're trying to set up. But if you can play gauntlets, a preparation and synth suit, you should always do that. Uh, look to fill the table with upgrades so that you can draw through the deck quickly. Uh, by having upgrades on the table, it means they're not cluttering up your deck. Uh, just keep in mind that you do have uh, counterintelligence and target acquired. Both are one per player, um, so those can't just pile up on the board. Um, but the more we can cycle through our deck, the more we can play Dance of Death and Covert Ops, and that's what's going to keep us alive and win the game for us. Uh, it is our primary damage engine when we're trying to use Dance of Death, uh, and then our enraged allies are going to be coming in second, so uh, make sure you're getting that enraged on the table and using it aggressively as well. Black Widow is going to defend early and often. Don't be afraid to take some damage on her, though, so that you can trigger counterattack. Uh, just be mindful about your health and use your healing wisely, especially if you need to flip over uh, to Alter Ego mode. You could get some benefit out of a couple of card draws, maybe even a safe house to pull back a key. Um preparation from your discard pile uh, if you are going I mean if you are using covert ops you need to do it to get everything under control if you do manage to pull that off the deck is going to cruise to some victories with the flood of preparations and other upgrades on the table managing the game state so it's a lot of fun to play I've had a lot of success with it uh, I play a lot of games in uh, expert mode I've gone up to heroic one with a couple of games and had some fun and success uh, it's just an all-around fun deck to play if you like to knock stuff off the table, especially if you're intentionally setting up your scenarios so that there's a lot of minions involved. And that is going to do it for this video, so thank you again for joining us here at Nomad Gaming, where we are committed to providing you with top-level content for the Marvel Champions LCG every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. If you've enjoyed today's video, hit that subscribe button and show your support for our channel. Leave a comment with your favorite aggression build for Black Widow, and until next time, let's go game!